Hello and welcome to our presentation, the business analysis perspective of leading discussions. Uh, sorry. Uh, so my name is Iskra and I, my experience as a business analyst is mostly in the area of electronic payments and online banking. Currently, I work in the healthcare domain. Hello everyone, my name is Alexander and I work as business analyst in data art since uh, 2019. And uh, prior to that, I worked for companies uh, in different domains uh, like finance, uh, media and uh, gaming as well. Since we are going to present different techniques for discussions that can be used in our everyday life SBAs, we think that the most important thing is to cooperate with all parties. And we think that Joseph Gilbert summarizes our message very well. The aim of argument or of discussion should not be victory, but progress. For today's uh, presentation, uh, we'll discuss uh, four main topics. Uh, Iskar will uh, first discuss uh, types of meetings and preparation. Then I will uh, talk about uh, techniques for brainstorming and interviews. And then uh, again, Iskra will uh, talk about uh, reaching decisions and dispute management. And at the end, I will discuss uh, the agile considerations. So types of meeting and preparation. As we all know, an important part of BA's work is to gather the requirements and to confirm what it with different parties, the business stakeholders and the technical ones. The BA must ensure that the requirements are clear, but also implementable. From that perspective, we can outline the following types of meetings. Define the requirements with business stakeholders. The goal is to define the scope of each feature and to discuss further details. Who will use it? Uh, how would use it? Or what other systems are involved? As a preparation, we may review any documents provided as an input. Also, we could read about the domain or review similar solutions. The important is to prepare some questions. Discuss the requirements with the development team. The goal is to make sure that developers and QAs understand each and every requirement. Discuss the technical approach to find out any technical inconsistencies. For example, missing fields in the interfaces. In order to prepare ourselves, we could review the existing system. We could also check any technical documentation about the systems or the interfaces that require integration. Discuss technical considerations, implications, approaches with architects and solution designers. The goal is to resolve any technical issues in advance. We may prepare a short description of the technical obstacles and sample resolutions. Discuss the business with the business stakeholders, minor changes in the requirements based on the technical considerations. The goal is to update the requirements in a way that they can be implemented, but we have to convince the stakeholders. We could prepare a business friendly description of the problem and changes proposed. We could also present the numerous changes required in other systems in case the requirements are not altered. And now over to Alex to present the next topic. Techniques for brainstorming and interviews. Uh, first, I'll uh, talk about interviews and then uh, we'll move to brainstorming. Um, as we all know, interviews are among the most popular techniques uh, that business analysts use and they are a traditional source of uh, requirements input. They are especially helpful when we uh, verify facts, uh, engage end users or elicit requirements. And uh, they provide an opportunity to uh, explore our stakeholders' knowledge and needs in depth. And uh, also one of my favorite pros of interviews is uh, that they allow you to ask follow-up questions, which are especially helpful in situations when we uh, do not possess uh, strong domain knowledge. Agile projects also um, make extensive use of uh, interviews uh, as a mechanism to get direct user involvement. We can say that uh, uh, interviews have uh, three main stages. Uh, 
preparation, conducting and planning. During uh, the planning and preparation, preparation phase, uh, you need to um, consider uh, two main uh, things. And one of them is whom would you like to ask? And the other is uh, what would you like to ask them? Knowing your stakeholders at this uh, stage will help you to address the right questions to the right person. And thus, uh, it will ensure that you receive more adequate answers to your questions and uh, more accurate answers as well. As uh, asking questions is an essential part of the business analyst uh, job, um, uh, we'll uh, take a look at uh, how we can formulate better questions by following some simple action steps. Start by identifying the gap. Uh, and try to understand uh, what is the missing information or the required uh, decision that needs to be made. After that, try to answer yourself by gathering uh, all the relevant data and uh, conduct the necessary analysis uh, to come up with an assumption or uh, different options. Then formulate the question by choosing the most appropriate uh, question type and afterwards uh, identify uh, the respondent by understanding who can bridge that gap or uh, who can make the right uh, decision. Then communicate the question by choosing the most effective way to deliver uh, this question and make sure that it's well understood. Follow up if uh, your question is not answered immediately and uh, validate the answer to make sure that it bridges the original gap. Finally, uh, reflect uh, your findings into, uh, in the requirements. Next slide, please. As, uh, as it's a more uh, formal setting, uh, in the beginning, it's important to make sure that uh, the person or the people on the other side uh, feel comfortable so, th so that they can be more open and provide more detailed answers to your questions. Start by introducing the agenda and uh, the objectives of the session and address any uh, concerns uh, that uh, they may have. Also, uh, it's quite important to stay in scope and uh, do not uh, lose your time uh, in uh, irrelevant topics uh, for the interview. Uh, that is why it's a very good idea to introduce the agenda and the objectives in the beginning. This can definitely help. Also, listen actively and take notes, as this will help you to um, follow the conversation and address uh, any additional questions that may arise during the conversation. Another very uh, helpful thing for me is uh, the recording of the interview. Uh, before the start, you can ask the person on the other side if he or she is okay to record uh, the interview. And uh, this will help you uh, to, um, uh, in, in case you miss any details and you'll be able to come back at the interview at a later stage. And also will uh, take off some pressure uh, from taking very detailed notes uh, during the interview and you'll be able to focus on the conversation. Another very important aspect while discussing anything with clients is being able to suggest ideas. Uh, rather than simply transcribing what uh, the person on the other side uh, says. The business analyst should be able to uh, propose ideas and collaborate uh, with, uh, with the person on the other side. Uh, sometimes stakeholders don't realize uh, the capabilities that uh, developers can provide and the business analysts are able to think outside the box and uh, help uh, to generate innovative uh, solutions and uh, ways to solve uh, problems. After the interview, an important thing to remember is to take a look at your notes uh, as soon as the interview uh, finishes uh, and uh, fill in any uh, information that is missing while the discussion is still fresh in your mind. Also, you can send a copy of your uh, interview notes uh, and ask uh, your interviewee to confirm them. Uh, this will help you to establish a stronger relationship with the stakeholders and uh, secure their buy-in 
but um, most importantly, it will um, uh, confirm your understanding and interpretation of the conversation we've had. Now let's move to uh, the next slide and uh, talk about brainstorming. It's a widely used, uh, used technique, not only by business analysts, but many other professionals as well. And uh, the main goal of the brainstorming session is to generate a wide uh, range of ideas that will solve clearly defined problems. And uh, these possible solutions and uh, ideas can be a very valuable input for the business analyst uh, during a challenging project. And uh, uh, we as business analysts uh, can use brainstorming sessions to generate ideas on features uh, of a new or existing system or identify possible solutions to tackle a business problem. Similarly to um, interviews, uh, brainstorming sessions consist of three main stages as well. Um, preparation, conducting and wrapping up. Yeah, next slide, please. And uh, during the preparation of the brainstorming session, you need to go through several things that may seem obvious, but uh, especially important for the success of the brainstorming session. And uh, one of them is uh, to clearly define your goal. As uh, we already know, asking uh, the right questions gets much better answers. So uh, probably it's uh, best to express your goal as a question. And a very useful approach uh, when having a complex question is to break it down into uh, several multiple objectives and uh, smaller uh, multiple objectives as well. And uh, another very um, good approach when struggling to uh, identify uh, your goal for the brainstorming session is to actually uh, first brainstorm the problem. When it comes to getting more ideas, lots of uh, researches show that uh, collecting ideas on your own is better. So probably a very good idea is to provide your team with such an opportunity. And the group uh, activities can be performed afterwards uh, when you have uh, lots of ideas to discuss, improve or combine. When uh, the brainstorming session is over, uh, you need to spend at least some time uh, analyzing your results and uh, try to elaborate and expand each uh, idea to ensure better understanding and uh, better quality of the ideas you've collected. And then you have to select the most promising ones. And here a very uh, good approach um, is uh, to uh, introduce some set of criteria at the beginning so that you can filter your ideas much faster and easier. Brainstorming can be messy, but uh, your final vision should be laid out clearly and you should follow uh, some towards resolving your problem. Now let's uh, take a look at some individual and group brainstorming techniques. Mind mapping uh, can be used both for individual and group brainstorming activities. In a mind map, as opposed to the traditional way of note-taking, information is structured uh, in a way that resembles much more closely how your brain actually works. Since it's an activity that uh, it engages your brain uh, from its analytical and artistic uh, uh, part, it uh, helps to generate uh, much more ideas. Gap filling can be used also for individual and group brainstorming. And in, in gap filling, uh, you require to uh, identify your current state and your end goal, and then fill in the gaps. Um, it's, it's very uh, helpful when it comes to uh, problem solving because uh, it, uh, it requires you to find uh, workable solutions. Reverse storming, as uh, the name suggests, uh, is uh, rather than, than forming solutions uh, to a problem, uh, in reverse storming, uh, you actually need to cause the problem. And this is very uh, powerful way uh, to open up uh, new solutions for recurring problems. Group passing technique, uh, 
in group passing technique, um, a team member shares an idea and then passes it to the next person in the group who should add uh, their thoughts uh, to the idea and then pass uh, to the next uh, member of the team and so on. And uh, at the end, uh, once uh, everyone has submitted their ideas uh, and everyone has provided thoughts to each of these ideas, you end up with a thorough list of um, ideas that uh, have been elaborated on. Uh, in brain writing, uh, each group member uh, is uh, writing their uh, ideas anonymously. And uh, this um, serves two very important purposes. The first one uh, is, uh, to, um, is to prevent any uh, personality bias that might arise. And second, it provides uh, a way for more introverted uh, team members uh, to still uh, contribute to the, to the uh, ideation process. In the end, uh, you, you uh, have um, lots of ideas that uh, may not have uh, been shared uh, because uh, of the group uh, brainstorming. And finally, brain netting is, uh, has become a very popular uh, technique for the, in the modern work space where virtual collaboration and uh, remote teams are much more common. With uh, brain netting, uh, participants use virtual collaboration tools uh, to share ideas in real time. And as I said, it's a very helpful technique for distributed teams. Now uh, we'll move to Iskra and she'll discuss the next topic. Reaching decisions and dispute management. First, we are going to review the reaching decisions parts. It is very important to reach decisions in order to close any gaps in the requirements. The two major types of decisions are business decisions and technical decisions. The business decisions are usually about how a specific business service would work. It is important to understand the business drivers and motivations around the issue. The goal is to reach a decision that all stakeholders agree with. Also to reach a decision that is easy to be implemented and fits the existing security and data model. Always strive for simplicity. Complicated requirements that require a complicated implementation usually bring further complications. Always have in mind the simple options and try to convince the stakeholders to take them as a next step. Try to present the pros of the simple solutions. Try to present the cons for the complex solutions. How many dependencies on other teams and systems they have. Stakeholders want at the end to have a working service and they don't, they don't want to wait too long for that. Technical decisions are usually about choosing a specific technology or communication protocol between systems or a security solution. Often an architect or a solution designer is involved in taking the decision. Make sure that the major interactions are explained well, for example, via workflow or sequence diagrams. The decision makers would need to understand the complexity of the interactions to select the best technology for that. Now let's prepare for the discussion. You need to define all the discussions, all the decisions to be made. You need to know who the decision maker is for each decision. This may be one person, it may be many. You need to know the criteria or information the decision maker will use to make the decision. In case the decision making is done in a collaborative forum, then the facilitator should engage the group into reviewing each criterion together to ensure a balanced involvement from the forum. Now, further considerations. Outline the importance of the topic discussed. This could be achieved by specifying how many users would be affected by the issue, or how much time it would take for a user to complete the task, or also in terms of revenue. This should motivate the stakeholders to find a reasonable solution. Present the topic in a simple way. Prepare some simple diagrams or just use a few words that outline the problem. 
This makes the topic easy to understand and would make sure that every stakeholder understands it in a correct way. Prepare some options for the decision, but be open for further options. The initial options would drive the stakeholders into further thoughts. Describe some arguments already discussed on previous meetings. In case the topic is being discussed over several meetings, we would like to proceed to the next steps and next thoughts by simply preparing an overview of what has been achieved so far. Rely on other people's experience as well. As the stakeholders usually work in their area already for a long time, it is good to rely on their experience. They would also appreciate that and would try to contribute to the decision from their point of view. Let everyone speak. Everybody needs to feel involved in the discussion and to contribute. A good PA is a good listener and observes the group's dynamics for participants that dominate. People that are dominant need to be managed through business of skills to enable everybody to provide adequate input. People who are less dominant need to be given the platform to express themselves and provide input where required. Ask the question why. Sometimes people insist on something without an obvious reason for that. Asking the question why may clarify the reason for that or make the person less insistent whenever there is no serious reason. The resistance to change. Sometimes the people are simply afraid of using new systems. Try to convince the stakeholders in the features of the new solution. The facilitation they would gain. Discuss the preparation of detailed instructions. Try to find an automated solution for repetitive tasks. Send meeting minutes with the decisions taken. As an insurance for important decisions, you may send a short summary that is easy to review and approve. Furthermore, the decisions taken and reasons for that could be listed as part of the specification so that further approving stakeholders are confident. And now let's review the dispute management. It is possible to have conflicts between stakeholders, usually regarding major questions related to the project. Thus, it is important to resolve them in order to enable the planning and the refinement of the requirements. Such examples are development priorities for specific functionalities or different business decisions like which users are eligible for the new service or to select a provider of a specific service. We may use the following techniques to resolve the conflicts. Mediate. Organize separate mediating discussions with each party of the conflict to help them recognize that there might be different views on the topic. Resolve any differences and reach conclusions that would be agreed by all participants. Identify the underlying interests of the parties. It is important to distinguish those interests from their stated positions and help these parties identify solutions that satisfy those underlying interests. Separate the problem from the person. You may ensure an objective approach so that the real issues are debated without damaging working relationships. Discussion. Make all conflicting parties discuss and negotiate a solution to the conflict. Encourage conflicting parties to exchange information, arguments and opinions. Try to convince one another of each other's viewpoints in order to reach an agreeable solution. Compromise. Encourage conflicting parties to find a compromise between alternative solution, which is a combination of different parts of alternative solutions. Also, a compromise can mean that all alternative solutions as proposed so far are discarded and entirely new solutions are creatively developed. Voting. Conduct voting among all conflict parties on solution alternatives. Each stakeholder votes for an alternative and the alternative with the most votes is accepted as a resolution to, to the conflict. Definition of variance. Find a way to develop the system in a way that permits variance or alternatives. For example, to be configurable per user or other entities. This way, the system can satisfy different interests of stakeholders, which can be considered as a 
win-win situation. Overruling. If all other methods fail, request the sponsor to decide. This technique is only advisable if other resolution techniques have failed or are not applicable due to limitation of resources, for example, time. Now I am sure that you would successfully resolve any of your conflicts. So let's move to the next topic. Let's uh, discuss agile uh, considerations. Uh, in an agile team, uh, the business analyst, Piska uh, Kuju, uh, yeah, put on the next slide, yeah. uh, in an agile team, uh, the business analyst uh, is part of um, a highly collaborative uh, team uh, with focus on delivering value in short cycles and helping the customers understand what, uh, what they really need, uh, not uh, only upfront, uh, but also as the product unfolds in small uh, usable chunks. So um, let's uh, discuss how the, how the role of the business analyst changes and respectively the frequency and the way you communicate with uh, the team and the customer in an agile environment. Next slide, please. Uh, when it uh, comes to requirements planning activities, the business analyst should uh, facilitate uh, and uh, participate in product vision and road mapping workshops, as uh, well as these and iteration planning uh, workshops. The business analyst should also help the customer and the team to identify logical groupings of uh, requirements and use them to create a product roadmap. In addition, the business analyst uh, should uh, conduct analysis spikes on, uh, to elaborate on uh, backlog items that need uh, more analysis and researching. During requirements uh, elicitation activities, the team aims to identify the sources of requirements and then elicit uh, requirements from those sources by using different techniques and approaches. The role of the business analyst here is to plan and facilitate meetings with focus on collaborative elicitation techniques and uh, plan and facilitate um, requirements uh, modeling sessions throughout each iteration. Also identify acceptance criteria for the user stories and in some cases, catch out prototypes as well. During analysis, the team uh, seeks to understand and define requirements so that stakeholders can prioritize their needs and uh, decide which requirements to build. The business analyst should help uh, the customer um, define their vision and scope upfront and collaborate with developers uh, to ensure that uh, the requirements include not the, uh, the technical aspects of the product as well. The business analyst should also help the customer and uh, the team uh, understand backlog items uh, select for, selected for uh, delivery in an iteration. And also should uh, help the customer uh, understand requirements dependencies that might uh, cause any adjustments in the backlog. Uh, in uh, requirements specification activities, the business analyst uh, uh, should create user stories and acceptance criteria so that uh, each story becomes a, a well-defined uh, piece of uh, valuable software uh, to be delivered in the current or next uh, iteration. The, also, the business analyst should determine the format and form of documentation that is necessary and uh, sufficient uh, for uh, requirements related documentation. During requirements valid validation activities, the business analyst uh, should uh, meet uh, with the customer uh, and the team to review uh, the backlog items, uh, should participate in uh, iteration demonstrations and gather stakeholders feedback on the delivered requirements and to learn their uh, to learn the customer's uh, real needs and determine uh, how, to, how to adapt uh, the evolving product. Also, the business analyst should uh, uh, plan and facilitate iteration retrospectives and uh, also collaborate uh, with the developers and quality assurance engineers uh, 
uh, to elaborate on acceptance criteria for the user stories. And finally, during uh, requirements management uh, activities, the business analyst uh, mainly helps the customer and the team to establish the product backlog, uh, to define requirements traceability, and to, um, to continuously uh, reprioritize items, to break down stories, and uh, estimates, uh, estimate the size of uh, the backlog items uh, that will uh, affect the releases. Also, the business analyst should uh, help the customer to uh, maintain the backlog uh, in, uh, for, for example, on story cards or um, spreadsheets or tools like uh, Jira or Trello, for example. As, uh, as we can see, the business analyst uh, in an agile environment uh, is involved in uh, lots of communications and meetings and is not isolated uh, of uh, the development process. Uh, next slide, please. And as a conclusion, um, remember to always be proactive uh, and don't forget that uh, the aim of an argument or of uh, this should not be victory, uh, but progress. And now it is time for your questions. Please send them in the chat because we are ready to answer them. Let's switch to the chat. <sighs> so people, we are expecting your questions. Anything related to discussions, to BAs, share your opinions. Anything related to conflict management or your experience with this or anything related to agile process? Uh, you may also share recommendations. Anything, simple questions, complex questions? I think uh, if, if we don't have any questions, uh, we'll, uh, we'll just uh, like to ask you uh, to share your feedback uh, in the feedback form that uh, will be sent uh, in the chat and it will be very uh, helpful for us. Okay, you, you can see the feedback uh, form. So please don't hesitate to, to share with us. Have a great evening and bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.